Well, kia ora koutou. very warm welcome once again to St George's Online Church Community. My name is Josh Jones and today we are very excited because we're going to continue our journey where we are exploring and celebrating the great gift to our church communities and also our individual faith walk that is the worship sung, be they old or whether they are new songs. Because whatever era these songs may come from, the truly anointed ones will weave their way into the rich tapestry that is our worship song life. Now, worship in all its completeness, of course, is far more than just about music. But equally, singing spiritual songs to God, to quote St. Paul, is a important bedrock of what it means to be a worship community. Now, over the past two weeks, myself and then Chris Clark, we looked at two of the classic hymns. Today, Steph, our children and our young people are going to explore a more contemporary song. And it's a song that was written by um, someone I consider to be probably one of the finest Christian songwriters of our present generation. And I'm talking about Matt Redman. And the song today is Heart of Worship. Now, like a great many songs, this was inspired through a profound experience of the composer himself. And I guess this song was born from this need to understand what it means to live worshipful lives in all its completeness. So, as I said, really excited about this and looking forward to hearing from Steph and our young people. But let's take a precious moment just to pause bring to God your own personal journey of this last lockdown week. Bring all the swirling undercurrents that will be tugging us at all in different ways at this time. And just take a moment to reflect. Well, let us pray for the Spirit's presence and wisdom to be with us all today as we journey together into the heart of worship. Let us pray together. Holy Spirit of God, abide with us. Inspire all our thoughts, pervade our imaginations. Suggest all our decisions, order all our doings. Be with us in our silence and in our speech. Be with us in our haste and in our leisure, in company and in solitude. Be with us in the freshness of the morning and in the weariness of the evening. And give us grace at all times to humbly rejoice in your life-giving companionship. So let us join together now as one voice in sung worship and sing another Matt Redman classic. Bless the Lord, O my soul, 10,000 reasons.
wonderful everywhere on earth. Let your glory be seen in the heavens above. With praises from children and from tiny infants, you have a built a fortress. It makes your enemies silent and all who turn against you are left speechless. I often think of the heavens your hands have made and the moon and the stars you put in place. Then I ask, why do you care about us humans? Why are you concerned for us weaklings? You made us a little lower than yourself, and you have crowned us with your glory and honour. You let us rule everything your hands have made, and you put all of it under our power, the sheep and the cattle and every wild animal. Birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and all ocean creatures. Our Lord and Ruler, your name is wonderful everywhere on earth. Today's reading comes from Book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. The message. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Good morning. Our worship song today is called The Heart of Worship and was written by Matt Redman. It came about in the 1990s as a result of a pastor choosing to buck the system a bit. Imagine coming along to church and there being no music group, no mics, no keyboard, no organ or even guitars. That's what happened in Matt's church, Soul Survivor, in Watford, England. Their pastor felt that although the band was amazing and the congregation was really enjoying the worship, that they were a bit apathetic. Worship isn't just cool songs or beloved hymns. Worship is so much more. And their pastor wanted their communal worship to be coming from deep within each person. Worship is not meant to be a spectator sport, but something entered into individually and when gathered together communally, each bringing their worship to create a connected whole. So they embarked on a journey of discovery. The pastor, Mike Pilavachi, asked them each week, 
What is it you are bringing to God in worship? His point being, we're not simply coming along to worship, or as we are now, sitting on couches, at our tables, or even on our beds. As consumers, looking for that thing to take away with us, to prepare us for the week ahead. Rather, he was challenging us to come seeking to bow before God to bring ourselves and what's on our hearts. What are we bringing to God in our worship? Let's listen to Lauren as she sings the first verse. verse reminds us that when all is stripped away, when we simply come before our loving God, that is enough. Throughout the Bible, we're reminded that God created us and God is always pleased. But it's right when we approach God seeking, longing just to bring something that's of worth. Worthy is what the word worship means. That something will bring joy to God. We know that about our human relationships. We get to know those we love the most through spending time with them, and we want to bring joy to them. There's a gentleman in my community who grows roses commercially. Right now, he can't sell them, but he also can't bear to just simply compost them. So instead, he chooses to bless our community. As he heads home, he leaves heaps of them at a central area and then posts on Facebook that they're there. They bring great joy to us. This week, my husband happened to be coming home from work and he saw him them putting them out. He knows how much I love roses, so he collected some to bring them home for me. And they truly blessed my heart. How much more should we long to bless God's? Our psalm today is one of King David's. He's full of joy and wonder, verbalising the majesty and power of God. He's using phrases like, how magnificent is your name? You've covered the heavens with your majesty. David speaks of God in awe. What is a human being that you remember us? He remembers the work of God that God has given all of us to do to care for the earth and all of its occupants. That's a good thing to remember in this season of creation month. King David, of course, was chosen because of his heart for worship. The prophet Samuel was sent to anoint the new king of Israel by God. But he had to bypass the tall and the handsome, the intelligent, the sporty, the arty, until God pointed out the one who loved to create worship songs as he cared for the sheep. The song draws us back to this theme in each of the choruses. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I am coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. David would pour his heart out to God on those hills, and that pattern began in childhood. He continued throughout his life. The Psalms, at times, are a hard read. David's frankness can be confronting, but also remind us that all of what's in our heart 
we can bring to God. Our anger and frustration, our hurts and pains, our languishing, our joys, our awe and wonder. What is in our heart? As our children and young people point out, worship is not only our Sunday services, but our prayers, our song, our love, our very lives lived out, seeking to bring glory to God in some way. The way we treat those who serve us, the way we observe those in our community and seek to fill, fill the needs they may have, the way we spend time in God's word, thinking, listening, learning, creating, and yes, in musical worship too. But when we come together, what have we made our worship into? Let's hear Lauren again. King of endless world, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. We come to worship sometimes harried and rushed sometimes a bit frustrated, maybe longing for God's touch, maybe simply because this is what we do on Sunday mornings. Right now, we're not able to gather again, and we're feeling all sorts of things. Some of us are over all the disruption and complexity of life. Many don't like having to use Zoom to connect with each other. We feel like we're Zoomed out, using the same media to connect with all the people we have to during the week. The last thing we want to do is to do it again in the weekend. And that's fair. And yet, in essence, in more settled times, we also meet with each other in pretty similar ways. We meet in person, in different places, in classrooms, workplaces, homes, churches, cafes. Maybe we make the odd phone call, which is different or we talk over social media. When we're in person though, it's familiar. Meeting digitally is a bit more clunky. It's taking a bit more getting used to. The screens are more uncomfortable for our eyes and the scenery can be a bit the same. We get more tired. And that's the thing, the scenery is pretty the same. In our everyday lives, we move from place to place, from group to group, from activity to activity. In lockdown, we don't move from place to place. But we can move from people to people, and we can do different activities, although we are a bit more restricted. The location and the type of activity might be refined a little. But it's really tiring adapting to a new way to live, learning new social rules, being proactive to keep busy. Remember when our brand new five-year-olds entered school and they were in bed by 6pm because they were exhausted by all the learning they were doing? Yeah, I think we're doing that too and have been for 18 months as we adapt to this more complex world. So let's circle back to that question Pastor Mike asks. What is it that you are bringing to God in worship? For some, life in lockdown is pretty quiet. Normal patterns are disrupted. Even those working from home theoretically have some more time as we no longer have commutes to our workplaces or schools or places of voluntary work. Those families who are locked down together though yeah, it's not quite so quiet. What can we bring to God in worship will look very different. That's the thing, isn't it? Our lives are to be about Jesus. All that we do, all that we say, all that we think. And what we offer is us in all the ways that God created us. Our second reading from Romans reminds us that we're called to place our whole lives before God as an offering. 
I thought I'd look up the meaning of the word offering. We, of course, may well think immediately of our financial gifts, but offering means a bit more than that. Generally, the dictionary says, it's a thing offered, especially as a gift or a contribution. Now, a gift is usually something in an individual gives another individual or a group gives to a group. At least, at the very least, it's something given freely to another. But a contribution can be part of a bigger whole. So, for example, as we've been raising funds for the roof, we've each contributed as we are able. And together, we've made a whole gift to replace the roof, an offering. In our worship, we bring ourselves as an offering. And when we come together, we are challenged to bring ourselves as a contribution to their offering as a whole. When we come together to worship, be it online or in person, we have something to offer, our hearts. We come as a group of people united in our love for Jesus and our desire to offer him our hearts again. I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. To finish the story, over a few weeks, the congregation, after enduring some awkward silences and discomfort, began to find their voices in worship. They began to sing a cappella. They began to pray and experience God in new ways. God's spirit was once again freed to work in their lives. One day Matt went home and wrote this song as a way of processing what was happening. And the rest, as they say, is history. We too are invited to come back to the heart of worship. What is it we are bringing to our worship each day in our everyday lives and in our communal worship? As Millie sings us the whole song, I invite you to consider God's invitation to us this morning. What is our offering to God? When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth. That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself It's not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart Though I'm weak and poor, oh 
all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus um, Obviously musical, I think, is most associated with worship for me but also art forms and also what we do um, our actions our deeds um, I think they can worship God if they, if we're doing what's right um, it's pointing towards God it's saying thank you God so I think that's that's worship for me love 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 um, and love I love God definitely saying a big thank you praying well, obviously praising him and just whether it as it said before, whether it's just singing or just being together. Joy, worshiping the Lord for joy, <coughs> praising the God. I reckon it's um celebrating who God is and recognizing who He is, and then handing everything over to Him at the same time. Peace, singing, singing. Um, yeah, I think it's just kind of coming into God's presence and just kind of yeah thanking Him for the good things that he's done. Joy. Pray to the Lord. I think it's like um, being together with other people and um, recognizing recognizing um, God's work. Everything. Happy. Joy. Joy. Anywhere. Let us pray. Dear Lord, on this Sabbath day, we come centering our hearts on you, fully on you, Lord, away from the distractions of this world. Lord, forgive us for when we have strayed away from you and tried to run our own show. Lord, when it's all about you, let us realize the goodness of your gospel and find renewed hope in that. Lord, we pray for our city of Auckland. We pray for those affected by last Friday's evil, evil terror attack, and that there be healing and recovery uh, by your power, Lord, to those victims. We pray for the people of Auckland as it continues to weather the storm of COVID-19, that there would be comfort people would reach out in new and creative ways to one another and that there would be a hope when people realise that they cannot control this world and that you, Lord, are in control. We thank you for our frontline workers and the lengths they go to in this weird time. We pray that through your power you protect them and give them great health and safety. Lord, Focusing on the message today, we come realising that it's all about you. Lord, help us to meet you in worship and praise, unfiltered joy and emotion. Let us meet you wherever we are and worship your holy name, because Lord, it is all about you. We pray this in your holy name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Do hope that you can continue to join us, whatever level of lockdown we may be at. We will certainly endeavour to keep bringing these wonderful offerings of worship um, as part of our online church community. I want to say a big thank you to Steph, to our children and our youth for your contributions. You've truly blessed us. So thank you so much, guys. I guess a few thoughts as we leave what might 
bringing something of worth uh, as an offering look like for you? What might it look like to search much deeper within? I'm going to leave you with a quote from Rick Warren that speaks into these thoughts and questions. He said this, Work becomes worship when you dedicate it to God and perform it with an awareness of his presence. Great quote. So our prayer is with all of you this week that in the small details of our lives we can all know the sense of God's presence and the sacramental. Going to go out with what is, I'm reliably informed, definitely one of our youth, their big favourite songs. It's My Lighthouse. So go now to love and to serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. We go in the name of Christ.